Hi guys, welcome to Counterpoints. My name is Connor, and today we're going to be breaking down monsters in the Hammer and Bolter series. We're redoing this episode to fix some technical and lore issues, and to make sure that our episode is in line with fair use so it doesn't get taken down by Games Workshop, which unfortunately has happened to some other episodes. This episode is brought to you by Mastermind Models and Miniatures. They are a phenomenal paint studio out of Huntsville, Alabama, who are waiting for your commission idea. You know darn well that you're just going to spend another fortune on plastic gray kits that are just going to sit there in your pile of shame, and it will take years to to get them on the battlefield. Instead of procrastinating, let Mastermind Models and Miniatures bring your imagination to life. Go to the link down in the description below and tell them that we sent you. Where are those the proper gods, old man, always have? Gods that give us strength and do not lie. Always? Your forefathers worshipped Sigmar too. Ah, yes. Sigmar the false god. The coward. Sigmar the soul stealer. The traitor god. Now why would we turn our backs on him? <laughs> All we want is to survive, and I will ensure that we do. It's the land they want, the realm they turn their backs on. They don't give a shit about us. Isn't that right, city man? <sighs> Why do our people still fight amongst ourselves? When there are true monsters all around us, we are all children of the realms. There is always a choice. Our choices are our own. I know. Just as you know, there is another way. Your death is coming if you do not see that. Be sure to... He'd already told us more of them are coming. I couldn't stand his jaw flapping. City man. <laughs> Worthless. And yet our weak still die on their spears. We move at first light. Long Eric, you have to watch. What? Why me again? <laughs> because you are a worthless runt. Now go. <laughs> As I mentioned in my previous episode, I think of Warhammer Fantasy as set in the warp during a time of relative stability. In this corner of the Sea of Souls, the gods can create and manipulate the realms as a kind of spiritual chessboard on which they get to play with the lives of mortals for their own amusement. While this can diminish the importance of the realms in some people's minds, it doesn't for me, because if anything, what does Earth represent but a fleeting mortal wisp in the expanse of time and space with humans grappling with forces beyond their control? The mortals of the realms are just as at the mercy of nature and the gods as anyone, and this is the crux of the conflict between the two tribes we just witnessed. The old world was lost to chaos and was destroyed. Sigmar was once a mortal warrior and king who achieved apotheosis through his deeds and became a god of order and lightning. When the old world was destroyed, he floated through the void listless and without purpose. He was found by a celestial dragon and together they found shards of magic of the old world and used these to build the new. Souls lost to oblivion reconstituted in the realms and for a period the gods of order, destruction, and death ruled as a united pantheon, populating and clearing the realms for their patrons. But Nagash, the god of death, wished to overturn the balance of power and 
seized total control for himself and allowed the forces of chaos in. This forced Sigmar and his followers into a fighting retreat into the realm of heaven known as Azure. Many refugees were thankful for the protection of their god and the safety which the celestial cities provided, but the horrors were not over. Sigmar believed there to be spies and traitors amongst the refugees, and those escaping the forces of chaos were subject to spiritual inquisitions and culling. These slaughters created a fear and distrust amongst the civilian population, biding their time until they could recolonize the realms. This story shows that great colonial effort and the tribal warfare between the Sigmarites and the Dark Oath Marauders. The Marauders are the survivors of Sigmar's withdrawal, viewing him as a coward, a traitor, an oathbreaker, and a soul stealer. This refers to Sigmar building the Stormcast Eternals by stealing their souls from the god of death Nagash and reforging them into his immortal army. The Dark Oath Marauders have no luxuries, making their homes in the wilds, amongst the beasts and demons. They drink water from melted snow, they hunt the game of the land, they take what they will from soft city men, and they draw their strength from the dark gods of the wilds. The Sigmarite leader is simultaneously trying to reconcile with the Marauders while also threatening them if they don't surrender. Abandoning these people during the retreat to Azure was a necessary evil, but humanity should be coming together to fight the forces of destruction, death, and chaos. The Marauders are lost souls, following dark and evil gods, and if they do not reconcile, the forces of Sigmar promise death. For his passionate speech, he is rewarded with a knife to the neck and a brutal death. The Marauders break camp as quickly as possible as more Sigmarite forces are closing. The forces of Sigmar are burning the forest to drive the demons, beasts, and Marauders out, making way for their great reclamation of the realms. The Marauders swear their oaths. The brother of the Chieftain swears to avenge the dead. The niece of the Chieftain swears to protect her family. The Chieftain swears to honor the gods and give them their due. The Marauders are driven into an ambush, one which they embrace. They're already here. They herded us like sheep. Smarter than they look. There they are! Hooray! Open fire! Scatter! Go on then! 
Prove me right! Age of Sigmar is not medieval fantasy, but renaissance. And what I mean by that is along with the swords, bows, axes, and armor, we have crossbows, muskets, and steampunk war machines. The free guilds are mortal militaries that guard the realms of Sigmar and who fight alongside the Stormcast to bring his light to the realms. Provided for by the industry of the cities, they are far better equipped than the Marauders, wielding crossbows, muskets, plate armor, and are supported by a colossal steam tank. To deny this advantage, the Marauders use their speed and ingenuity to take out the patrol. There are tons of beautiful details, like arrows bouncing off of Sigmarite armor, but also being deflected by the Nisa's Blood Oath totem. Yorvak's horse is wounded in exchange, and after claiming a few Sigmarite skulls for himself, he breaks to consort with a demonic patron. Fire is used to turn gunpowder against the city men, and the Marauders are victorious, with the Nice winning an honor duel against the Sigmarite captain. Overall, I'm a huge fan of the increase in animation quality and the grisly violence as the series has progressed. the elders why our people are not the city men you know nothing of sacrifice it has to hurt go back to your scuffle little brother you've lost your way look at it Gunnar. just look at it this is the truth this is no patron it will kill us all it feeds on loss. That is the oath I swore. That is the price I pay. Only children cling to innocence. You think we survive because of your precious cave? Your snow water? Singri's rat meat? We survive through the favor of the gods. I am the chieftain, and I do what I must. You lead us into damnation. Fool, Gunnar, fool. This is the way of the realm. It will always be like this, now and forever. We all die in the end. Better to go in glory. You know it in your heart, brother. You too walk the red path. I walk my own! Eric, he killed them all. He can't have. The Free Guild. 
He gave Eric to this beast. He killed his own kin. And now you kill him? Your own brother? He left me no choice. It has to be this way. Stay your damn hand! <sighs> In the final conflict, it's revealed that the chieftain Yorvath has been sacrificing members of his tribe to a Wendigo Chaos Spawn. It is not sufficient to sacrifice scrap food or your enemies to the gods. The Dark Gods feed on loss, and therefore a sacrifice to them has to be something that actually costs the tribe. A Wendigo is a forest demon that possesses cannibalistic humans. A Chaos Spawn is a creature that is unable to incorporate gifts from the Dark Gods and mutates into a gibbering monster. Yorvath has chosen this monster as a patron god and views it as a gateway to the warp granting his tribe power. His brother Gutter rejects this patron, believing his brother to be delusional and is able to take down the massive beast with assistance from his daughter. Yorvath is possessed by the forest demon but is ultimately spared by Gunner. Gunner takes charge of the clan, promising that whatever dark oaths sworn by his brother, he will chart a new glorious path for the tribe. I love the themes of this episode, including the fact that some Chaos Renegades view themselves as free men charting their own path in the wilds. I love that Yorvath acknowledges that sacrifices are meant to be just that, sacrifices, things that you give up that hurt in order to prove your fealty to the gods. I love that Gunner's daughter stays his hand to prevent Gunner from becoming a kinslayer, maintaining his honor and her promise to the gods. I love that the daughter is revealed to have spared the Sigmarite captain, showing that even amongst the Marauders, there can be honor and mercy. Now, if you like this video, like, share, and subscribe. Ring the bell and comment down below for the comment gods. All of that is free. It helps me in the algorithm and helps other people find my content. If you like what I do and want to see more of it, join our Patreon at patreon.com slash counterpoints, but it's also linked below. We also have an Indiegogo for the science fiction weapons project we're doing, so if you want to see me blow stuff up, throw me a couple of dollars there. If you want to hang out with other nerds and talk about Warhammer, science fiction, politics, philosophy, model painting, kit bashing, or terrain building, then join our Discord and you'll find like-minded people, also free by the way. If you like political debates or essays, then check out my channel channels linked down in the description. If you need a wallet, check out Hawkins and Company. If you need third-party bits, check out Libra Demonica. If you need your models painted, check out Mastermind Models and Miniatures. If you need body and face wash, use Geology. If you need a healthy breakfast cereal, get some Magic Spoon. If you need a gaming chair, go to Ewan Racing. And if you need a standing desk, use Flexi Spot. I appreciate you. Catch you in the next one. Until the end.